Welcome back to Worldview. Now, in part two of our interview today, we're going to be taking a look at the world of Earl Wilson Jr. He's written a wonderful new musical called Yes. It talks about a fictional encounter between the 2004 Barack Obama about to give his speech to the Democratic National Convention. And just as he's about to deliver that speech, he's transformed into some sort of a time warp to where he's face to face with Martin Luther King Jr. And the two of them have a lot of information information to impart to each other and a lot to be learned. It's truly brilliant. It's done in musical form. The uh, first number to be performed uh, in front of any audience was done by a choir of 800 students from around the globe in Washington, D.C. on the steps of the Jefferson Memorial. Now, Earl, you had a body of work before this new musical, Yes. It was a sexual musical called Let My People Come. It was very successful off-Broadway, and it has an incredibly interesting history. Tell us a little bit about that musical. Well, we did indeed. I was, um, I was very young, and I was trying to write shows, and I had written a show. My first show was a show called A Day in the Life, and it played in New York very briefly. I was in it. I actually wrote it for myself. And when it closed, I was a singer in those days. I did a club date in Houston, and I met a young producer. And he said, I hear you just had a show on Broadway. And I said, yeah, well, it closed. He said, let me hear it. So I played it for him, and he said, I know why it didn't work. He says, let me help you correct it, and we'll do it down here. So I spent about six months there. We did that. It worked down there, and we became very good friends. And about a year later, one day, I'm sitting in New York in my apartment, wondering what I'm going to do. And I get a call from him and he says, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. He says, you're going to write a show. I'm going to tell you how to do it. And it's going to be the, become the biggest off-Broadway musical ever. And I said, oh, really? And why is that? And he says, because it's going to be about sex. And he said, you want me to write a show about sex? I couldn't do that. I'm too nice a guy. What are you talking about? I couldn't do that. He said, you're not as nice as you think you are, number one. I feel pretty confident you can do it. And I'm going to guide you all the way. So he said, I want you to sit down right now and write the most outrageous song you can think of. Call me back in half an hour. Am I allowed to use real words in this? Yep, it's okay to, to call it whatever you have to call it. We're on the internet, so it's okay? We're under no illusions or restrictions by the FCC, so please feel free and uh, use whatever words you feel are necessary to describe this song that you've written. Okay. So I sat down and I had a vision of something that actually happened to me in real life that every guy would like to have had happen to him. And I figured it's a real moment. It's valid. It's true. If I have the nerve to write it out and take claim and ownership of it and say this actually happened to me so much so that I can quote what was actually said during the conversation while it was going on. That's how much I remember. I, I, I can do this. So I wrote it. And sure enough, it took half an hour. I put it on tape, I took it to his apartment, I played it for him. He went crazy. He said, I knew you could do this. And I said, what, we don't have, we have, we have a song. The name of the song is Come In My Mouth. And he, he laughed and he said, it's the most outrageous song I ever heard of, but it's beautiful and it's true. So we proceeded to work on the show for months. We had no money, we had no connections, but we believed we could pull it off. Uh, there came a day when we, he said, we have to get a cast. So we auditioned for non-union actors in New York. We got a thousand people who showed up. We selected 14. We worked for five months via uh, uh, rehearsals and encounter groups, which were very popular in the 70s. Uh, and there came a day when he said, the producer said, you realize we're going to have to have nudity in this. And I said, oh, I didn't know we were going to do that. I said, yeah. I said, well, how are we going to do that? And he said, we are not going to do that. You are going to do that. They will believe you. They will not believe me. So we had a rehearsal at my mother's house. And my parents were out of the, out of the country at the time, of course. And I greeted the cast in the nude with candles all around the living room. And they walked in and they were shocked. And I said, folks, today's the day. We either do this or we have no show. Half the cast took their clothes off at the door. The other half explained for the next 12 hours, which is how long the rehearsal went, why they couldn't do it. Their parents, their religion, their, their bodies, blah, 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 blah. And one more story about this. The, um, so we, we got to a point where my mother finally said, so what is this that you're working on? So I said, it's this, this show about sex. Is it writing a show about sex? I said, yeah. 
She said, well, can I see it? And I said, well, it's a little rough. You know, she said, let me see it. So we did a backers audition at my mother's house and they invited professional backers, the kind of people who go to Broadway shows with millions of dollars. And they came in their jewels and their mink coats and they sat there and we sang the songs and their jaws dropped down to their knees and they got up quietly and walked out and didn't say a word. They didn't know what to say. They were so embarrassed and outraged. And my mother sitting in the back of the room working on her fourth vodka called me over and said, I think you have a hit. I said, you mean that? He said, absolutely. It's funny. It's touching. How much money do you need? And I said, well, I need $10,000. She said, well, we don't have $10,000, but I'll give you three. And you get your producer to come up with the seven and you got a show. So my producer had a flower shop in Houston. He went to the bank and he borrowed $7,000 to get a freezer for the flower shop. So that seven and my mother's three put the show on. And she made it back many, many times over. <laughs> brilliant. That's just brilliant. What a great story. Now, I have to ask, where does Bob Dylan come into all of this? Well, many, the, the show was a huge underground hit and a lot of celebrities showed up. Uh, and this actually happened one night. Bob Dylan was in the audience the same night that Sammy Davis Jr. was in the audience. And they were sitting at different places, a big off-Broadway theater called The Village Gate. And at one point, Sammy Davis went to the house manager and said, I would love to meet Bob Dylan. I'm such a fan of his. Could you go over and see if he would say hello to me? So the house manager went over and <laughs> tapped his shoulder and said, Sammy Davis Jr. would like to meet you. And apparently, Dylan went, blah, like that's the last thing in the world he would want to do. So the manager went back to Sammy and said, I'm sorry, but he's not interested. So Sammy said, okay, I know he's a big star, blah, blah, blah. Dylan then, at the end of the evening, went to the house manager and said, I would like to, to make a film of one of the songs in this show. And the house manager said, what? He said, I really like that song. I want to make a movie. And the manager said, well, first of all, we don't have the rights to do that. But for you to even speak to anybody about it, there's one thing you're going to have to do. And that is, you're going to go, have to go over to Sammy Davis Jr. and apologize. And he didn't. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not surprised about Bob Dylan not doing that. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not a surprise at all. As a matter of fact, I can't think of a situation where Bob Dylan would apologize for anything to anyone. It's, it's very clear that you are... Uh, excellent in this particular genre. You have a lot of experience in it. Um, you know, lightning has clearly been caught in a bottle with Let My People Come. So the, the question this now begs is, uh, how do you recapture that magic with this new musical? Yes, I mean, uh, are there plans to bring it? When do you plan to bring it actually out uh, as, as a musical to the rest of the world? Well, we're in the process now of, of uh, making that happen. It's due to have its world premiere in Kansas City in 2014 around uh, Dr. King's birthday, <clears throat> excuse me, but there's a lot of interest in doing it in other places and maybe even prior to that. We are in the business of finding celebrities who will support it right now. And the trick is to find out who knows them and how you can get them. It's very hard to do. Uh, that's a long task. But if you know people in show business, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody. So that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what we're trying to do right now. Well, I have to say, it's just a fascinating project, and, and I really have to wish you all the best in getting it uh, out there into the marketplace. And, and I really, really want to thank you for taking some time today. Uh, we've been able to stretch this over a couple of sessions now, uh, being with us and explaining to us how this all came to be. Just absolutely fascinating stuff. Thanks again. Thank you, Dennis. Great pleasure. Been speaking with Earl Wilson Jr. He's the creator and producer of a new musical called Yes. It shows the fictional encounter between Barack Obama and Martin Luther King Jr. The music, some of which I've heard, is absolutely amazing. And again, the plan is to have this launch in Kansas City in January of next year, 2014 right around the time of Martin Luther King's birthday. So if you know of somebody that wants to invest in what sounds like is going to be a really, really good show, please do try and contact us and we'll make sure we pass that information on to Earl. You're watching Worldview with Dennis Campbell. Stay right here.